Hey musky anglers, welcome to Joe's video vlog number two. Hey, today we're going to talk about the uh, some of the specifics on our second YouTube video and how to, you know, the, the whole the whole discussion in this video is, is using these minnow baits, two things. One is using the minnow bait as, and, and, crank, and crank baits in general, as a side scanning sonar. We're going to talk about that. And the second thing is, is triggering techniques with with a minnow bait around cover and in cold fronts in general so those are two things we're going to talk about so here we go first thing crankbait fishing crankbait fishing in general is a big thing for me and as you know I wrote a book some of you know anyway that I wrote a book on crankbait fishing called Joe Booker's crankbait secrets you can get it just google it just google it online you, you can find it in a lot of different places it's out of print right now but still there's 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 uh, uh, there's still publications of it available in various places and uh, anyways in my crankbait secrets book and my lifelong love of crankbait fishing my lifelong study of crankbait fishing going way back to when I was an early teenager bass fishing is is I learned that the crankbait not only caught fish but it also spotted the structure or the cover uh, the spots where these fish were likely to be. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, most anglers fish a crankbait, whether it's a shallow running ver uh, crankbait like the Shallow Raider that's going to be featured in this particular uh, discussion, and it's on my uh, second episode on YouTube this year, or a deep diver. You use different crankbaits just like different tools for different jobs. So a shallow running, a medium running, or a deeper diving crankbait you use, depending upon the situation. Depending upon the, the cover you're fishing, depending upon the depth. Now, <clears throat> what I'm getting at with using it as a as a side scanning sonar is when you're running, if you're on the bow and running the bow, but you can do this from the back of the boat and the side of the boat as well to find those spots where there is a, a thick isolated piece of cover that might hold a bass, a walleye, a pike, or in this case a muskie. So what I do from the bow and I suggest you really consider doing this, folks, you guys watching the, the vlog and really getting into what I'm doing here, is learn to run your boat, not only with your sonar, watching your sonar unit and watching your mapping, mapping systems, your sonar unit, and, and adjusting your trolling motor accordingly, but also add a third element to that. And this is something, like I said, I've been doing this for decades, is make casts, make your cast in front of the boat you know, left, right, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, casting around with your crankbait and trying to feel out where the topography changes. And you can do that so easily before your boat even gets there, before your even your side imaging or any of the stuff that you're using on your boat presently. Most of your side imaging images to the side of the boat. You know, there's some, new, some of the new units that are out there, and yeah, I'm going to experiment with some of those myself this summer, that you know, that run off the troll or run off the bow and will help you in this regard. But you can do this without the expense of, of, of the sophisticated sonar units just by using your crankbait. Cast the crankbait in front of the boat. If, you, if you're fishing a weed line, for example, and you'll see this in this video, see it unfold in the video on YouTube this week, is that I'm casting along a weed edge, probing inward when I don't hit weeds, probing back outwards when I do hit weeds. Now, serves two purposes. It locates where the fish are or where the cover is, and it also gives me a cast length to, co to correct my boat control to get on the right spot. So this is really a cool thing, and I've done this for years. And back in my early days in southern Wisconsin when I was growing up down there, um, I found early in my career, I found that in the summer these bass would, would when, when they were done with the spawn and done with their post-spawn thing, they would, they would kick out and spend the entire summer into most of the fall on offshore weed flats. And the best way to find those little clumps of deep kababa and coontail weeds and grass was to throw a crankbait over them. And you could just cast around, you, have, you cast your crankbait here, 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 boom. You hit some isolated weeds. And there is where you're most, most likely to catch a fish. And more often than that, by the way, when you hit those weeds, especially in the bass fishing world, you hit those weeds, you're probably gonna hook a fish. 
And that's just, you know, that's just confirmation. It happens just as much in the musky world where I'll be probing, doing my side or front scanning sonar with my crankbait, so to speak. And I'll, oh, there's a weed, you know, and I'll pop it, pop the, the crankbait off the weed and boom, I get a strike. So that's a big part of the triggering technique too. And, and you don't want to overlook that is that when you're casting a crankbait, <clears throat> If you're just getting into crankbait fishing, this is one of the biggest things you want to you want to really dial in on, folks. Is crankbait fishing? The term crankbait is maybe a little bit of a misnomer because most people that have never done it before think that all there is to it is just throwing out and cranking it in. In fact, most people fish honestly crankbaits, especially uh, uh, people just getting in. Novices just they get. It's not that you can't fish a crankbait. You you know you can fish a crankbait wrong. It's not that you can't fish a crankbait wrong. Throwing out and cranking in, you're going to catch some fish doing that. But most of those styles of fishing, you're avoiding cover. What I'm suggesting you do is probe. You know, you're trying to find cover. You're trying to find even isolated brush piles, cribs, spines of rocks, uh, projections of gravel and stuff that stick out. You'll find all of that with a crankbait by casting and, and fan casting and feeling out this cover and the structure in front of the boat. And then you can adjust your boat accordingly. Now let's move on to the technique of, of what we were doing in this video, and that was fishing the shallow raider. This is the five inch shallow raider. And in this video, that's what I was fishing with, cold front conditions. And when I, whenever I run into cold front conditions, and here's a big tip too. Whenever you run into conditions, whether it's cold front or anything, and you're not getting follows, that's a big, big key. When you got good fishermen in a boat fishing alongside you, like in this particular video, I've got the one and only Chaz Martin, dude, fishing right alongside me, and he's not raising fish, okay? And I'm not raising fish. What does that mean? Well, in my world, I look at muskies two ways. One, chasers, and those are the fish that chase down topwater lures and follow buck. Those are the followers. They follow bucktails. They follow topwater. They follow jerkbaits. But when they're not following, they're not chasing, they're ambushers. They're laying tight to cover. And those fish, when, they, when they're when they laying tight to cover and they're not chasers, they're ambushers, when, they, when they're in that situation, that's when this style of technique will, will get them. And, those, and the free riding, fast moving, running gun lures will not. And that's the way I'm fishing this lure in this particular video. I'm, I'm throwing it out. And, I, and as I've said in many, many of my videos, when I talk about this lure in particular, <clears throat> I use this lure as a hybrid lure. In other words, I don't just do one thing with it. I do a number of things with it. This lure, you can throw it out and crank it in. It's a floating, diving, shallow running crankbait. And it'll catch fish doing that. And I do catch fish doing that. But what I like to do with it is use it as a jerkbait, an up and down jerkbait. Boom, rise, boom, rise, boom, hit cover. You know, jerk it and, and, and flick it out of the cover and let it rise. And then when it's about 50% of the way back to the boat and I'm not feeling any cover anymore, then I turn it into a crankbait and crank it straight to the boat and finish with a figure eight. And that's why I do the straight retrieve, by the way, at the end. Now, I know a lot of guys have success. I know a lot of guys do. Uh, just jerking these things all the way to the boat and then leaving them rise at the boat and then twitching them a little bit and doing this dead stick thing. And that triggers fish. I, I, I agree. It triggers fish. I argue I trigger more fish by hybridizing this bait and turning it into a straight retrieve bait and getting into a figure eight because I want that fish to get turned on when that bait all of a sudden starts moving in a straight line. And I have a higher, much higher chance of triggering that fish at both side by retrieving and then going into a really good figure eight. If I'm bringing that bait all the way to boat into it in a jerk bait style retrieve, suddenly going into a figure eight, it almost never works. It's rare, it's really low. But a high percentage of fish, when you go into a straight retrieve with this lure, will trigger it at the boat on the figure eight because it's moving. And then all it does at the boat is just change directions in the, in the flow of the figure eight. So there's a couple of extra things. Here's some more stuff. The type of hooks I put on these baits varies with the conditions. Now, the way you see this bait right here, it's got three aughts on it. And the reason it's got three aughts on it right now is... Um, you know, it's winter time as you watch this video. Now, maybe next summer you'll be watching this video as well. But um, And I do use this in the summer like this one. I want to fish deeper and I want less rise or I want it to suspend. So I will take this same lure. And I designed it this way on purpose. This 5-inch shallow reader will get this. Now, remember this. It will float 
with a one on it, which is what we market it with, is what we put in a package. It will barely float with a two on and it suspends or slowly sinks with a three on Okay, I was fishing this in the fall. I wanted a slow sinking, suspending bait. That's where the three outs are on. Now, in the video you're about to watch, my YouTube video this week, I was fishing with one aughts because I wanted a floating, buoyant crankbait because I'm fishing around weeds. And Chaz and I do discuss that part of it in this video um, throughout the discussion as right after I caught the fish. Uh, one last thing that's really important here, and then we'll, we'll summarize everything, is tackle. My main tackle for this style of fishing is St. Croix. This is, uh, this could be my favorite rod of all time, folks, that St. Croix ever made. This is St. Croix uh, Legend Tournament Downsizer Twitch Stick, okay? Legend Tournament Downsizer. You remember a few years ago when I had the shoulder injury, okay? And I was, I was worried I was really out of the musky game because I couldn't throw the big stuff for over a year. And so I started throwing small baits, bass, large bass baits, really small musky baits, and surprisingly having big success with them, even on the bigger fish. But I didn't have really the proper rods, and what I was doing was stealing bass rods out of the St. Croix stock to fish these baits because I needed, I needed more flex. I needed more load in the rod to throw the lighter baits. And I needed more rod bend once I hooked the fish so I wouldn't stress the hooks that are on these baits. My friends at St. Croix solved all those problems by coming out with this Downsizer series, Legend Tournament Musky Downsizer. And this specific rod is my favorite. It's called the Twitch Stick. It's a 710 medium fast, <clears throat> medium heavy fast. Um, and it's just a terrific stick. 710, okay, the Twitch Stick. Just remember Twitch Stick. That's all you got to remember. Now, I outfit that, that rod with a small reel. You know, I'm a... I'm a big fan of these smaller reels and 65 instead of 80 pound line. Now, you could put 80 pound line on here. I would argue don't do it because the 65 will flow better on, this, on, these, on, these, on these reels. It doesn't lose spool diameter during cast because of the smaller reel. The 300, this is a 300 Alexa uh, H, and any comparable reel in this size is going to do the job for you. Uh, by the way, did you know that there is really no difference in gear strength? Uh, and strength of the reel between this 300 and the 400. It's all about line capacity. In fact, it could be argued that the wider spooled reels actually, actually there's more stress on the axle. And my friend at Matt's Reel Repair has pretty much confirmed that, that he gets far less uh, reel repairs on, on 400s than he does on these 300s because there's less stress because it's a, it's a tighter fit. It's a smaller reel. So 65 pound beast braid, and I use both green and I use the, the, the tannic brown depending upon the water color. And, um, and then a 300 class reel, so the whole rod reel setup is lighter and it makes much much easier for the twitch technique. Instead of jerking it with a heavy rod, with this rod, you can do exactly what the rod's title is. You use it as a twitch stick, okay? And uh, finally, let me just show you one last thing here, and that is leader. Leader is important, especially with the smaller baits. I'm using a nine inch, JBO nine inch uh, stranded wire leader here. Uh, this is you know, this is their their seven strand wire leader, premium seven strand, and um, this is the nine inch version. And I love these these new um, these uh, fast attach snaps. So I use them a lot. I use them a lot on everything. In fact, um, let me show you how easy they are to use. If you've never used a fast attach snap, these things are wonderful. Let me just show you this real quick. Just put it on here like this, and boom, it's on. See. And what's so nice about that is, in, especially in cold weather, or if you have any arthritic issues, uh, this is a terrific snap. It's, it, what I really like about the snap, by the way, is that it, it doesn't stress the, the wire. When you open the typical snap, when you open and close it, you are opening and closing, bending and bending and bending. You know the the snap as you open and close it. You don't do that with this. You don't do that with this. It's just you just. Uh, you're just basically turning the snap to take it off. You're turning the lure and the snap to take it off. There is no stress on the snap. So I use, that's what I use. I use a leader length, by the way, that's basically just a little bit longer than the lure. So there's no need to run a 12 or a 15 inch leader on these. In fact, I would argue against it because it takes, it puts that much more hardware in front of the bait, which has a tendency to 
dip the nose on these on these smaller baits and makes them uh, less buoyant. So you want that bait to float a little bit more laterally and you will get that with the smaller or the shorter leader and the lighter weight leader. And the flexible leader, by the way, is, is, is a winner in this situation too because it, it, you know, you've got a crankbait that's going like this and if you have a stiff wire leader, it tends to lock it up a little bit where the flexible leader gives it, you know, gives it more play, gives it more action, which is really a, a key in, this, in you know, when you're fishing these, these subtle minnow baits. One last thing to wrap this up, and that is the technique itself. When you're working these minnow baits over cover, be careful how, how much you jerk it. In other words, how, what, how the length of your jerk. A lot of times when folks work jerk baits, whether it's a classic jerk bait or a minnow bait, they just they get into a cadence of doing it a certain way and pulling it a certain length. I would argue you that you keep changing it up because your bait is going to hit different forms of cover. And, and at different times. So what you're gonna run into is the bait's gonna hit, you know, you're gonna be pulling that bait down and, it's, and it, you, you only pulled it down six inches or a foot or so and you hit something already, especially in the shallow part of your retrieve, the beginning. So don't keep jerking all you, uh, on that pull or you just, you're gonna pull it into the weeds and you're gonna drive it into the weeds too far and then you're gonna have a weeded up bait and you're gonna have a wasted cast. Instead, you know, just concentrate what you're what you're doing with your with your with your jerks and with your twitches so you when you hit cover stop stop okay and the next thing you want to do is, is take your rod tip back just a touch so you create a little slack in that line so that bait can float itself back out see and so if you drive it through the cover you've locked it up and you've buried it so it's it's boom and maybe the next jerk is boom you know and, and, and so on. So you're varying the jerks. Now, one of the things I've done too with this is when I get hung up in cover, you've seen me do it on my show. You've seen Chaz do it. Uh, anybody who's really good with these baits, you've seen them do this where they, they just put slack in their line. Bass fishermen do it all the time. Just put slack in your line and just keep, just keep snapping the slack out of your line. And what that does is when you just snap it a little bit, that bait is going laterally. And then going laterally this way and so when you're snapping it if you snap it with tight line you're doing this you're just pulling it into the weeds but if you snap it with slack line you do this see and then when it's rising up you're still even if you're snapping it still you're it's shaking those weeds free and most of those weeds by the way they collect right there right there so if you allow them without plowing if you allow them to just collect here when it's rising and you're, and you're creating that slack line to get a lot of lateral movement, it shakes the weeds free. Isn't that cool? And one of the challenges you want to, you want to challenge yourself when you want to get better as an angler with these style of techniques is challenge yourself to cast over weeds, work these baits through them, weed free. And you know, you have this little game going on really every retrieve where if you, if you come in with weeds, you lost the game. If you come in and your bait is weed free, you won. And if you do this often enough, you're going to find out that you're going to trigger fish. You know, here's what's going to happen. You're going to be going flick, flick, and that line is slack. All of a sudden, the line just jerks tight, and out of the water comes a, a, a muskie with, your, bait, with the, your bait in his mouth. Hey, don't worry, by the way, about that fish being hooked and, and you losing them with the slack line. They just jerk the slack out of your line. But it does bring up one more point. Always keep these hooks really sharp. I check my hooks before I, I make every drift. And, and you know those uh, those uh, folks who don't sharpen their hooks, you're, you know that's that's something you want to change this year. And secondly, and we by the way, JBO makes a great hook sharpening file for that. And secondly, you want to check those hooks all the time because uh, it, every time you hit things, especially if you're fishing around rocks, you, you're gonna you're gonna dull those, you're gonna blunt those tips. And so you check them all the time. Best way to check them is to run them against your your thumbnail. If they hook into your thumbnail they're sharp. If they, if they slide on your thumbnail, they need to be sharpened. And see, this is a, a, a new lure, or a fairly new lure, and I, this, these hooks have not been sharpened yet, so the, the, they even as sharp as these things are out of the box, they need to be sharpened a little bit more. And that's the way I like them. I like those hooks so sharp that when if a fish comes up and just, when that bait is rising, the fish comes up and just barely gets a hold of it, you know, he's already hooked. He's already hooked. And you know, the game of musky fishing, like any fishing, it's like, so, it's like this much a lot of times. It's like the difference between hooking a fish well and the fish getting off is sharp hooks, is sharp hooks. And good tackle, reaction time. Um, 
one of the things you're going to find out about this style of fishing and, and, and this, this hybrid technique is jerking, jerking, you know, jerking it through cover and then turning it into a straight retrieve lure and finishing with a figure eight is you're going to get hooked on this style of technique at the same time while you're learning structure and you're going to, you're going to learn structure better. You're going to uh, catch fish that you, you know, that, that otherwise people are going right by because they're throwing high running chase baits. Remember chase, there are chase muskies and there are ambush muskies, especially when you're talking about cold front fish or pressured fish, you have a lot more ambush tight cover muskies in those, in those kinds of environments. And that's when guys who come through with smaller baits, working them in a jerk bait fashion with a little hybrid retrieve and a, and a figure eight, are gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna score. So do me a favor, check out our, our latest video, if you haven't already, the episode two, and you'll see us fishing this, fishing this lure in that episode. You'll see me score on a fish, watch closely the technique. And as you can see, the tackle is Legend Musky Downsizer 710, 65 pound uh, beast braid, smaller reel, the 300 class reel, and the five inch shallow rig, don't forget the tip on the hooks. You know, change your hook sizes out to match the conditions. When you want a floating, buoyant floating diver, go with smaller hooks. When you want a, a suspending or, or sinking bait, you go with heavier hooks for colder water or deeper conditions. And you do that with this bait, and you add that to your repertoire this year, you are gonna catch more muskies, including big ones. Thanks for watching.